Hi YouTube! I'm Mindy and today I'm going to be drawing and coloring an anglerfish with Copic markers. I'm using a Crayola erasable colored pencil I got from Staples to sketch it out. I prefer to use these over pencil because pencil ruins everything. I can actually be really guilty of pressing down too hard during the sketching stage and when I do this with pencil it doesn't erase completely in some spots. And then if I try to color with a lighter color over that area, I find the leftover graphite of my color mix and create a really muddy, ugly color. So I find using these colored pencils really helps me to avoid that, especially because I find they erase a lot better than a pencil does. I'm using a Pilot Pocket brush pen to ink. I absolutely love this marker. I love how black the blacks get. I love the variety of line this pen allows me to achieve. I didn't quite have a lot of variety of line with this particular piece, but it does allow you to draw very thick lines and very thin lines. Hopefully I'll show you in a different video. When it was time to do the teeth, I was sure to put a piece of paper over it because the one drawback to this marker is that it's very, very wet. So if your skin brushes a fresh line, that ink is going to stick to your hand. And then if you put your hand onto the paper, it's going to leave a smudge on your nicely inked line art. With the inking complete now, I'm now going to wait 15 minutes so my ink has time to dry. When I erase, I make sure to erase around the lines. Just in case. I'm a bit paranoid that maybe I haven't waited as long as I should have, and then the thicker line parts with more ink are at more risk for smudging when I erase, so it's much better just to erase around those lines to avoid that risk. Then I make sure to do a small color palette with the colors I want to use. It's much better to figure out that what you saw on your head doesn't match what's on paper on a scrap piece of paper, rather on your nicely inked line art. The first thing I did was start filling in Miss Anglerfish's base color. I used B60, one of my favorite colors. I just love that shade of blue. But unfortunately, the side effect to that is that I use it a lot, and halfway through filling out the base color, I realized my marker was starting to go dry. I started to try and go in sections, like I did the bottom jaw, and then I'm doing the top jaw, and then I'll do the fin area last. That way, if I ran out of marker, I would be able to improvise. I made sure to fill in the mouth next because inside the mouth is where the darkest values are going to be and I want to keep in mind what the darkest values are when I'm shading the rest of the drawing because it'll look weird if shadows on her body are just as dark as shadows in her mouth. I also used a little cool gray on her teeth. It's not very noticeable in the video, but I find trying to pay attention to little details like that will really push your art that extra mile, especially if someone is seeing it in person. After filling in the base color, I had started to think about where I wanted the shadows to be, and I decided I wanted the light source to come from where the lure is. I didn't necessarily want it to be like a very, very bright light. I wanted it to be more stylized so that we could see all of her rather than just bits of her with blackness behind her. But I still knew that I wanted to keep the light source coming from that area. So I kept that in mind while shading. When shading, I tend to do small chunks at a time to make sure that the ink stays wet. So instead of putting down one dark color, like under her lip, under her fin, on her lure, I do each section one at a time because in the past I've had experiences where I did that and got interrupted. Then when I returned to the drawing, I wasn't able to blend it like I would have liked. 
And you know, you can always save a drawing by blending markers over it. But if you want to do like subtle blending or light colors, it can kind of throw a wrench in your plans and force you to have to decide to do something differently than what you wanted. My anglerfish isn't really based off of any particular anglerfish. Before I drew her, I looked at pictures of anglerfish on Google and on science websites. I usually draw a very cartoony one, so I wanted this one to be a little more lifelike, but not too lifelike. Something a lot of people don't know is that there's many, many different kinds of anglerfish. So I looked at all of them, their fins, their different shapes, their different teeth and then just tried to keep the spirit of the anglerfish, I guess, in mind while I was drawing her. While coloring her fins, I was thinking of like a pleat skirt. If I'm honest, I was kind of imagining Sailor Moon skirt. I wasn't sure at the time how dark I wanted to go with the skirt, so I just kept adding until I thought it looked right. The best part about these markers is how much you can blend and shade with them. When I first started using Prisma markers and Copic markers, I would just do solid colors because I liked how bright they are. But now that I know more, I have more experience, I feel like it's kind of a waste to use markers that way. Everyone should do what they like, but these markers have such wide capabilities when it comes with blending and creating shadows. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? To create the illusion of light around the lyre, I decided to create a halo area around it using an R17 red marker. And then I would put R89 around that area. While filling in the color around the teeth, I made sure to move the paper around. I do my best to work with the tip. That way I won't end up with red teeth because this isn't that type of drawing. When I was filling in the R89, I think my biggest challenge was to force myself to go slow because A, I wanted it to have a uniform color and the best way to do that is to color in circles and color wet on wet. And B, it's moments where you're filling in big white areas like this that I feel like it's more tempting to go quicker and I find when you go fast, you run more risk of coloring over the lines and getting that background color on your main drawing. It's like I'd put so much work into my anglerfish and the light around her lear. It would have been a little devastating at this point if I'd slipped and got a big chunk of dark red into her head at this point. Once I was finished adding the dark red, the red in the halo started to look a little flat and boring to me. So I brought back the R17 and tried to create some shadow around the edge near where the yellow is to create a bit more depth. I liked where it was going, but it wasn't enough. So that's when I decided to grab the background color and add some lines and blend that in too. I feel like it made for a much richer drawing.
During this part, I messed up and actually smudged some red onto the leer. So then I pulled out my colorless blender, which got some of the red off, then busted out my BV00 to try and color over it. At this point, I realized there was no hiding the smudge. Like I could make the whole like leer rod thing a darker color, but I was actually quite happy with that color and I decided just to accept it because I feel like if I kept trying to make it work with that color, I would end up ruining it. At this point, I waited for the red ink to dry because when you lay down that much ink, it's very, very wet. So it's not very fun if I get a smudge of red all over the side of my palm and then end up with a big smudge of red in the middle of my anglerfish. I ended up doing a, just a few more touch-ups after letting the ink dry and then I pulled out my Sakura Jelly Roll pen and highlighted Miss Anglerfish's head and lure and spots on her fins and the yellow spot of the light halo. Then I decided to add bubbles. Because she's cartoony, I decided it would look good if I kept the bubbles very sketchy and fun and cartoony as well. Because I thought the white would look so nice against the dark red. I ended up being very happy with the effect this created. Especially once I added in the little dots to represent the bubbles that were far, far away, I thought it made the background much cuter. Plus you just don't want to leave a plain solid colored background. It just doesn't look as interesting as if you put a little extra effort in to put something there. And that's it. Thank you for watching.